What is the correct translation to the seven doors? Hashevad Latot, Sheva Hadlatot, or maybe Shivat Hadlatot? In this series of lessons, we are going to practice the numbers 1 to 10, including the masculine and feminine form, abstract and cardinal numbers, definite and indefinite articles, and more. Welcome to another Hebrew numbers lesson. The numbers 1 to 10 are the basis for all the rest of the numbers in Hebrew. The lesson's goal is to improve your knowledge and experience with the Hebrew numbers 1 to 10 and getting you closer to mastering the Hebrew numbers. Here is how it is going to go. I will start with a short overview of the previous lesson. We will go over each topic and for each one I will give you a short overview of the topic and then we are going to practice it. I will show you the right way to use the numbers by example, and I will also ask you questions relevant to the topic. At the end of each question, I will show you the answer. If you haven't watched the previous lesson, I recommend you go ahead and watch it before this practice lesson. Link is in the description and in the cards. As the lesson progresses, don't hesitate to ask in the comments below any Hebrew question at any stage of the lesson. Let's go! We started with abstract numbers, then we continued to cardinal numbers. In cardinal numbers, we discussed counting indefinite and definite nouns, and for each, we discussed the feminine form and the masculine form. Here is a diagram that will help you understand the development of the lesson. Each main topic in this series will be covered by a separate lesson, so make sure to follow all lessons if you want to master the Hebrew numbers 1 to 10. Now for practicing. We will start with abstract numbers. In Hebrew, abstract numbers default to the feminine separate form. We use abstract numbers when we use numbers that do not denote any noun. One example for abstract numbers is in math. We say 5 plus 5. Another example is when we count 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. The first question I have for you today is, which one of the following numbers is of the feminine form? Chamesh or Chamisha? Pause the video for a few seconds and try to figure it out. You can always watch the previous lesson if you need more information. The correct answer is Chamesh. Let me give you a tip. In the 1 to 10 numbers, the numbers that end with the letter He are the numbers of the masculine separate form. You can also remember that the longer names of the numbers represent the masculine form and the shorter the feminine form. Let's try another one. Which of the following numbers is in its masculine form? Shesh or Shisha? Pause the video and think about the answer. The answer is Shisha. Notice the letter He at the end of the correct number name. We said that the letter He at the end of the number name indicates the masculine separate form. This is true only to the numbers 1 to 10. Remember the tips I just gave you? Answer that if you can. Which of these numbers groups is of feminine form and which is of masculine form? The numbers are Achat and Shtaim for the first group and Echad and Shnaim for the second group. Take a moment to figure it out. The answer is Achat and Shtaim are of the feminine gender and Echad and Shnaim are of masculine gender. 
These numbers have a unique form and do not follow the rules in the tips I gave you earlier. You just need to memorize those two numbers and their form. Now we know how to better recognize the feminine form. Remember, we are not counting anything yet or denoting any noun. These are just abstract numbers. Let's look at the full list of the numbers again. The numbers are pronounced as follows. Achat, Shtaim, Shalosh, Arba, Chamesh, Shesh, Sheva, Shmone, Tesha, Aeser. To conclude so far, abstract numbers will always default to the feminine form, which you can see on the screen right now. So when you simply count numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4, etc., always use the feminine form. That is not all. This form of numbers, when they stand alone, is called the separate form. There is another form of numbers, and it is called the construct state. The construct state is not relevant for this lesson and will be discussed in future practice lessons. Now, talking about the separate feminine form, there is also a separate masculine form for numbers in Hebrew. Since the abstract numbers form defaults to the feminine form, using the masculine separate form of, for abstract numbers is incorrect. Let's see the masculine separate form of the numbers. You may recognize a few. We already saw some examples in the lesson. The numbers are pronounced as follows. Echad, Shnaim, Shlosha, Arba, Chamisha, Shisha, Shiva, Shmona, Tishara, Asara. Here is both masculine and feminine separate forms side by side. I've highlighted the main differences between the two forms. To conclude this section of the lesson, we discussed the separate form of the numbers. There are two genders for the separate form, masculine and feminine. When using abstract numbers in Hebrew, we use the feminine form. Take a few moments and pronounce the numbers. Try to look for the differences. Connect every number to the right gender and most important, memorize the numbers. They will be the basis for the rest of the numbers in Hebrew. If you have any questions so far, ask now in the comments below. Moving on. Let's talk about nouns that have a number attached to them. We covered this topic also under abstract numbers in the previous lesson. Let's see the word Ritzif or a platform. In Hebrew, Ritzif is of the masculine gender. Remember that detail. What is the correct Hebrew form of the following sentence? Platform number 8. Ritzif mispar shmona or Ritzif mispar shmone. Take a moment to find the differences in the pronunciation of the numbers. Recif mispar shmona or Recif mispar shmone. The answer may be a little counterintuitive. The answer is Recif mispar shmone. When shmone is the feminine separate form of the number 8. Why do we use the feminine form if the noun is of masculine gender? When we have a noun with a number attached to it, we always use the feminine form of the number, regardless of the gender of the noun. This may be a little confusing, since the convention in Hebrew is to inflect numbers according to the gender of the noun they denote. This is a special case. Other examples are house number four, bite mispar arba, room number seven, cheder mispar sheva, 
The nouns above are masculine, but we use the feminine form of the numbers attached to the nouns. So to summarize this lesson, we can see that abstract numbers are represented by the feminine separate form of the numbers by default. We saw the separate form of the numbers 1 to 10 in both masculine and feminine forms. We now also know that nouns that have numbers attached to them will always be followed by a number of the feminine form, regardless of the gender of the noun. In today's lesson, we practice the first subject in the previous lesson. In the next lesson, we will continue practicing cardinal numbers, meaning numbers that denote nouns or used to count nouns. Those numbers, unlike abstract numbers, inflect for gender and also change with the definite and indefinite articles. The next lesson is going to be very useful for you if you want to master the numbers in Hebrew. Well, that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed the lesson and you feel more confident with Hebrew numbers. Let me know if you have any question in the comments below. And as always, thank you and toda for watching.